So hold up, did our boy seriously just steal a grand piano, carry it down how many flights of stairs, all for that dramatic effect so that he could play the piano under the moonlight? I mean, he probably got a hundred pigeons or something to add that many feathers, all for that dramatic effect. This boy is putting other chunies to shame, man. He is getting the job done, and I have to say... I was a little confused on why they were so focused on the characters walking down the flights of stairs. I mean, in the moment, I was kind of criticizing it. Like, this isn't the most interesting scene. We're just looking at these two girls walk down the stairs, and at times, we're just, like, focusing on their feet. I was like, what are we doing with this fetish nonsense? But no, instead, they actually did a really good establishing shot right under my nose, because had we not seen just how many flights of stairs they truly climbed down, it wouldn't make it nearly as funny seeing the reveal that he stole that piano and it carried it all the way down. I don't care if he used slimes, I don't care if he used some magic to make it easier. It doesn't change the fact that he literally took a grand piano from a place he shouldn't have, basically carried it all so he could have that dramatic show. And if that isn't the most Sid nonsense we've seen, I don't know what is. This was a hilarious episode, but also, honestly, it just gets the end of the season to be a lot more compelling. I mean, especially given that we hear that Perv Asshat ended up getting stabbed, he got a little nick on his shoulder. Like, let's be honest, it's not the end of the world, though when you attack royalty, we see how that type of nonsense can spread. But yeah, what a funny, great, action-packed episode of The Eminence in Shadow. Now, I do have a full live reaction to today's episode available on my Patreon, so if you do want to see that, consider supporting but yeah, this episode and just the season in general has been an absolute ride. I'm hoping that we have room for one more I Am Atomic line, because if there's been a character who maybe deserves the nuclear blast, that fist of doom from our boy Sid, probably Perv Asshat deserves it. Because, really, I mean, we already were like in the tunnels, in the cave-like setting, and that's where the first one popped up. So is it too much to ask for maybe third time's a chart, maybe one last I Am Atomic? Even if we don't get it, the show is still absolutely fantastic. But for an episode that's really all about establishing where the end of the season wants to go, they actually kept it quite compelling. I mean, you last leave off with someone stabbing their fiance. Obviously, as a viewer, when you hear who got stabbed, I mean, his name basically says, I'm surprised he hasn't been stabbed sooner. But when you see the ruler and just like he's drooling, he just doesn't look like in his right mind. I don't even know if it's possible to salvage whatever sanity he might have left. The fact that they literally were just torturing our poor girl, waiting for her to make a move and lash out, so that essentially a war could break out, or at the very least, she would become a criminal to be hunted down. And we see the number of wanted posters. And sadly, the only thing keeping her going is that hamburger wrapper and her thinking of her boy Sib saying, oh, if only we could just run away and get married. I mean, this boy is a heartbreaker. He has so many people wrapped around his fingers without even knowing him. I mean, in the moment when he leaves the room with our poor girl, he's basically like, oh yeah, you look good today as he leaves, and she's blushing even more. He doesn't even know what he's doing half the time. Or even just the fact that with his best friend, you know, he comes knocking, that's how the episode kicks off. He's trying to avoid everything. And what the anime does such a brilliant job with that whole dynamic is whenever he's talking, half the time they lower his audio and make Sid's audio like about two times louder. So it sounds a little more fuzzy, a little more hazy, as if we're ignoring him alongside Sid. And even when we can hear him loud and clear, the visual gags of him like almost falling backwards and just trying to avoid his nonsense because he doesn't have money and he's trying to make money. I just love how that is his best friend and he could not be more disconnected from the boy whatsoever. And honestly, it's just a really fun episode just watching the shenanigans take place. You get a little more in terms of his, uh, <laughs> his uh, action scenes from when he's in the tournament and just how scummy he can be at times. To even getting some pretty cool action at the very end after our boy kind of like lends his abilities and just seeing her with a single slash. We don't even see what she did, similar to how half the time when Sid does something, we can't see what he does. And just it explodes into a basically a blood rain, and it's honestly really cool. But yeah, I think the piano joke might be one of the best things we've seen from this show, because, I mean, he's like, uh, I, I never liked the piano, I was forced to do it, but then I thought about how if I played under the moonlight, it would be really cool. And I love how after he's leaving, he just looks at this piano, does his menacing grin, I'm not thinking too much of it, and then we start hearing the piano as she's getting deeper and deeper into the caverns, and then we just see all these feathers, I love how the more you think of the jokes, the funnier they become, because where did he get all those feathers? Like, he would have had to hunt, like, a hundred birds. I don't think he just went to the store and bought a bag of feathers. Like, knowing him, he probably did some elaborate hunting thing just to get that many so that he could place them everywhere and they'd be floating in the distance so it'd look more beautiful 
kind of like that romantic dark undertone as he's playing. And I don't need to see how he got the piano down there. I don't need any more than what we just got because the scene of him looking at it, the scene at the end when you just see the pylons and they're just kind of like, what's going on? Where, where did this giant grand piano go? And we see what he did all for dramatic effect. I love it. We're 17 episodes into The Eminence and Shadow, and for 17 episodes, it's been one of my personal favorites that I look forward to every single week. And I mean, this show, it just doesn't miss. It has that perfect blend of dead serious with like almost a majority of the characters. Half the time when these girls are talking to each other, I'm just thinking of like, I've seen scenes identical in shows that are just that type of tone. And, you know, often you just kind of say like, yeah, it's fun, but can you really take it as serious as maybe these characters are? But because we know Sid's the one who's controlling the navigation system of this show, everything around him is so life or death, all these romance flags. I mean, this dude's like the ultimate dating sim guy. He just has romance flags planted in every which direction. Everything about this show is so dead serious. And then whenever we look at Sid, he's the most unenthusiastic, unimpressed character being like, hmm, how can I make my show more interesting? Ooh, a piano. Even though his best friend's talking about how like, his best friend could literally be talking about how he's about to get his kneecaps broke because he needs to pay back a loan shark or something, and Sid wouldn't be paying attention. He'd be like, hmm, yes, of course. Okay, I'm gonna go steal a grand piano. See you later, bud. And we, the next scene, would just see him in a wheelchair. Like, that's the type of nonsense that goes on. But I love how for literally every character other than Sid, this is the most serious show ever. And it almost is like five or six different types of shows in this ballpark. But because Sid's the one driving it, he just bounces around them and navigates it like it's nobody's business. And I love him. I think it has a very unique art style. After the very first episode of the show and then the second and third, it was such a tone shift and art style shift. I wasn't really sure what exactly it wanted to do with this visual aesthetic, but truthfully, I've come to really appreciate it. There's a simplistic beauty to it. They have fun sometimes when they go into those more like Super Saiyan dramatic action scenes like when our girls were clashing swords or initially when she drew her sword to attack Perv. There's some moments that are really well animated, but for the most part, it's a simplistic charm that just, it sticks out. It found its identity both narratively and visually, and I can't help but love it. I mean, these are the types of shows similar to an Overlord where I say, man, I could watch hundreds of episodes of a show like this, and I really hope we just continue this one after its initial 20 episode run because I'm having a blast talking about it, and I'm excited to see. Even if we don't get another I Am Atomic line, I think the show has definitely cemented itself as one of the more entertaining shows to follow both of last year and this year for sure. But thoughts and feelings yourself down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new around here, ring that bell if you want to get as many notifications to the channel as possible. I also have that live reaction like I mentioned available on my Patreon, and while you're there, you'll also get yourself a video shadow like a few individuals are getting today. So we got Migs021, Monsi7, and Nur Gareth. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.